A very warm welcome to you and thank you so much for joining our Homeopathy 24-7 podcast. We are going to be speaking to an array of international guests who will share their knowledge and experiences of homeopathy with you. We will discuss all types of subjects such as remedies, symptoms and stories of health. No matter where you are with your homeopathic journey, we aim to inspire you on your quest to natural health and living. The podcast is brought to you by Mary Greensmith, the founder of Homeopathy 24-7, which is a global platform connecting you with a homeopath wherever you are in the world, 24 hours a day. So let's get started with today's chat. Please welcome Mary Greensmith. Hello, welcome. So lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm really pleased to be able to welcome and love it. Anne is one of our homeopaths on Homeopathy 24-7 and she is really inspiring and has brought some brilliant questions to be answering. Welcome Anne, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too Mary, I'm really happy to be here. It's, I just love the fact that we can actually just talk about and spend a little bit more time answering these questions that we don't get a chance to do that really on the Facebook groups and things like that. So thank you so much for helping us go through this. You, you've given some brilliant questions here that you found on your groups as well. So let's start with the ibuprofen one, because I think this is a great question and one that we need to talk about a lot. And a, it'll relate to a lot of people as well, won't it? Yeah. So I think this one came on the arthritis group because, of course, a lot of people take ibuprofen and lots of other anti-inflammatory drugs to control their pain. Um, and questions often come up about the side effects of those drugs. And so this particular question was, I need to take ibuprofen. What can I take to offset the gastric and other side effects? And then another person on the same day said, I, have, I take ibuprofen for headaches and it's caused me a flare of IBS. What can I take to heal the gut? So I said, my very first response, always in a situation like this is, why are they taking the drug in the first place? Um, yeah. You know, ibuprofen, if, if you just look on Google, side effects, I did look on Google, on the, the Australian Alcohol and Drug Foundation, straight away tells you that regular use of ibuprofen may eventually cause anemia due to bleeding in the stomach, impaired hearing, kidney and liver damage, bleeding in the stomach and bowels, increased risk of heart attack and on the, the UK NHS they tell you that it can cause headaches, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, uh, wind and indigestion and of course they often also put ibuprofen on the skin as a gel and it can cause quite a, an extreme sensitivity to sunlight too so um, you know there are some really serious um, side effects like if you start pooing black poo or vomiting black vomit then it means you're, you're probably bleeding mm. in the gastrointestinal tract and so you, you know, these are really serious um, symptoms and as a homeopath answering your questions are on the acute line we need to be really aware of the, the potential serious complications that, that are there it's a and, really um, good point. It's a, yeah. it's a really good point because, of course, as soon as a homeopath has, you know, black stools, um, that for us is a red flag where we would be saying you need to go to go and get this this checked out. Um, so, you know, to just to have this as a side effect. Personally, I can't take ibuprofen at all because it gives me such chronic indigestion. Um, you know, <laughs> I feel far worse than I'd ever feel, whatever reason I would need it. So mm. what what can people do instead of taking mm. ibuprofen? Let's 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 talk about that first of all. Mm. Well, of course they can consult a homeopath, come and come and chat about the original symptoms, why they're taking the ibuprofen in the first place. And if it's headaches, and I'm always keen to hear about people's hydration and um, just just general practical advice and can sometimes be really helpful and and dietary things can be helpful, but homeopathic remedies can be so supportive. So that's where I'd always start. Say, well, why are you taking the ibuprofen in the first place? And let's address that. And hopefully 
we're going to just take away the, the need that they have to be on an anti-inflammatory. Because the anti-inflammatory, no matter how long you take it for, um, it's never going to address the root cause of, of why there's an inflammation in the first place. Of course. So what we're talking about is, you know, it stops you feeling pain, but the pain is still there. It's just that you can't feel it. Oh. Um, so so let's talk about the headache, because um, obviously having a headache doesn't mean there's something wrong with your head. It is a such a brilliant symptom that is telling you that something needs to change and we need to look further into it. So if we had 10 people come to us with a headache, we would look at the way what is happening because we need to to understand why you've got this symptom we need to start learning how to interpret the symptom and as as you first said the first thing we always look at is let's have a look at hydration and what happens if you have a glass of or two of water when a headache comes on but another important question to ask is is this a recurring headache is this happening often uh -huh. Yeah, and the nature of the headache, the, the, the degree of pain or discomfort and the, the sensation, they're all really critical questions for us detective homeopaths to ask to really find out everything we can about why that headache's there. It's, it's, it's crucially important that we understand the sensations in the body and, and it's often by asking those questions, you know, when did it start, why did it start and how does it feel? Um, People often say, oh, it started with such and such an event. And, and, and that is the first step of healing, understanding why something's affected you so much and then being able to take the steps to put it right. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, it's so important for us to ask, what time of day does it happen? And is it the mm -hmm. same day or the same time? Uh, is there a pattern? To it because then yes. we can start understanding what might be influencing your body before that yes and another very important thing i think about anti-inflammatory medicine in particular is if there is an injury then uh, say you've torn a tendon or sprained something badly and you take away the pain with the ibuprofen or um, whatever you choose to take then you're actually at risk of much deeper injury, much further injury, because you're perhaps going to exercise on that joint that's damaged and damage it further. And so it can actually prolong the the opportunity for the, the body to heal. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because of course, that symptom is there for a reason. If it's stopping you walk, it's because your body doesn't want you to walk. If it's stopping you move a joint, it's because your body wants to immobilize that joint. Yeah. To, to was, yeah, yeah. Sorry, symptoms are just there. I mean, I, was, I often say to people who are plagued with cold sores on their lips, you know, just imagine that that cold sore is a friend putting a friendly hand on your shoulder and saying, "You've had enough at the moment, and you're you've gone a bit too far. Your immune system's not coping. You're maybe too stressed. Stop and take stock as to why that's there, why it keeps recurring." And now that's, that's, again, a really important underlying thought to give patients, I think. So a lot of what we do is actually learning to interpret the symptom in a completely yeah. different way. Yeah, yeah. And well, understanding that symptoms are a healing response of the body. I suppose we look at, as homeopaths, we look at symptoms as little flags, the, the body's waving, saying, I'm trying to heal, but I'm really stuck. Whereas in conventional medicine, which of course has has so much to give us and, and so much value, and I'm not not um, in any way denigrating conventional medicine, but the way they look at symptoms is that there's something to be knocked on the head, something to be suppressed. Yeah. So you, you know, you give a pain medication, you give them an anti-inflammatory. Sometimes that if the vital force in the body, the energy in the body, is strong enough then it gives the body a bit of a rest and you can heal and move forward. But often it just takes away the symptom, but the symptoms there, like you said, for a reason. And if it's not allowed to express itself, the body can't move forward. And, and I always think that remedies, the, act, the energetic action of a remedy is to just gently push the symptom 
forward. It's like it's rolling forward in a positive direction towards healing. And the body's always trying to heal. There's so many obvious examples of that, like being sick or having a fever, um, where, where the, you can clearly see the body has to do this. You know, they have to vomit up whatever it is that's caused the stomach upset. Or, you know, so yeah, with their positive. Um, signs and and often our, our patients don't really understand that we look at the body from that really positive viewpoint that what's happening to them it needs to happen our bodies are such amazing um, pieces of equipment aren't they because mm. they have yeah. got this this wholesome innate ability to self-heal and all we're doing with the homeopathic remedies is helping that self-healing mechanism boosting it really isn't it yeah absolutely the more um, our patients learn about how we need to interpret those signals the more they can help us to find the right remedies because the remedies themselves you know they're quite complex really aren't they and um, it's easy as a homeopath to, to sometimes get lost amongst the many many symptoms that our patients give us and actually that's one of the things I really value about being on this this group with you and with all the other homeopaths on homeopathy 24 7. Sometimes you, you just get the opportunity to chat amongst yourselves which, which otherwise it can be a lonely profession and you don't have that support so we've got this wonderful support network of other homeopaths who who really get it that, that it's a complex art as well as a science and and that that's that's it's a good place to be for us. I think it's a good place for patients to reach us because we're such a strong community. You're absolutely right. And I've just just come off a, a speaking with somebody who has never used homeopathy before. And they were so worried about it because it was their last um, ditch attempt, effectively, before putting their child on, on medication um, for, for anger tantrums and, and, and things like that and very very nervous about it so i had to explain you know a, a, along the way and and you know one month in one remedy and she said it, it it's like a magic pill mm. why don't people know about this and you know so so just coming together with homeopathy 24 7 i just hope that we can introduce more and more people to the concept of trying it of, of, of yes. understanding it a little bit more because on this question that that you know you you came up with first of all we had the the doctor coming on saying then yep you've taken your ibuprofen and now you've got ibs and then the general scheme really is is take a medicine have a side effect and take a medicine for that and then have a side effect and take a medicine for that. And before we know it, we're having to take a whole series of medicines and people forget to stop taking the medicines. Yes, so yeah. Homeopathy you, is so different, isn't it? Yeah. And you mentioned about it often being the last resort. So I see we often get really complex, difficult cases and people have been ill for a long time. And in arthritis, that's that's right up there because um, people have often resorted to, as you say, a pain medication and then further medication to help them with that. And so on it goes and they can take the medications for years and years. And only when they become maybe just too used to those medications, they don't work quite so well as they did at first, they, then they might come to a homeopath. And then they're often coming with years of okay. suppression of their natural symptoms and it's quite a difficult thing especially in arthritis to go right back um, and in fact that brings me to another question that was asked which was on the arthritis group someone said a very blunt question they just yeah. said is there a complete cure uh, <laughs> yeah of course that well that brings us to another question about what cure is doesn't it and and you know with arthritis it really so much depends on the extent of the damage the, to the joints and the bones and the age of the person, the comorbidities, you know, what other illnesses have they come with? And so there's lots and lots of questions. But I think you and I were really most interested in what is cure 
And yeah, and, and the fact that it's worth saying here, because as homeopaths, we are not allowed to use the word cure. No. Uh, it's against um, English. I, I'm presuming that it's the same in other continents as well. But in the UK, mm. we are not allowed to say we can cure people. We're not allowed to say that we can treat people. What we can say is that we can help you feel more comfortable. Um, yeah. So... Let's go to now what actually is cure because um, because it means different things to different people, doesn't it? And as we've already said, talked about the fact that your set of symptoms is trying to tell you something. In order to address the cause of those symptoms, we need to go back to what was happening before those symptoms first started, don't we? Mm. Yes, but I think we also need to consider the nature of what cure really means. So when we, we would maybe not use that term. We might say we're going to support you yeah. through your natural symptom yeah. pattern. But um, if you maybe consider someone who has um, a handicap of some sort, a, a, a disability that society might look on as being, oh, they, you know, they're compromised. But actually that person might have the best life and the best energy and um, it's not necessarily to do with what other people see it's to yeah. do with how you feel in yourself how how satisfied you are with your life and that spiritually and in every way how satisfied you are with your life and your communication with other people all those things come into what it is to lead a good life and of course we want our patients to be free of pain and I think that's probably one of the number one jobs particularly in arthritis that, that we have um, but um, it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing for every person. You're absolutely right and just even to start by saying how will you know when you're well opens up a whole field of questions doesn't it? Well if I was well what would I be able to do? What would I choose to do? What would I bring into my life that I am restricting right now? And even that question itself, put back to the person that that, that answers, um, asks the question, is 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 the beginning of the healing process. Absolutely, and recognizing their limitations and how much they mean to them. It might be someone who's a little bit embarrassed maybe to go out in public or to, to go and meet their friends or just embarrassed that they can't maybe travel as easily as they used to be able to. And so their life becomes a little bit restricted by that. But if we can help by supporting them through alleviating painful symptoms, then they can suddenly go out and meet people and communicate. And of course, that, that in itself is just so vital to to having a, a life that feels healthy absolutely right I, i've got a lovely case actually one of one a case that right back when which started when i very first qualified where lovely lady came to me with a a wart on her hand a huge wart i mean as big as you know a, a 50 pence piece it was huge and she had another one on her finger and she'd had it and she'd had it burnt off and had various things to do and she had a glove on her hand all of the time and she'd had this on for for t over two years because it, you know it, it it was it was so bad and in actual fact she was a very poorly lady. She was on two pages worth of drugs. She had an autoimmune disease. I think she had actually five autoimmune different diagnoses. She had steroids um, pumping into her body 24 hours a day. Um, and and she, she had to have a driver, obviously. She had somebody helping her at home. She was only in her 30s, so very, very young. Um, and I gave... A, uh, you know, where do you start with this? Well, obviously she came for the wart. So I, I gave her remedy for the wart, um, which in actual fact was rather bizarre because I gave her x-ray um, because she kept saying that it was like a poison coming out of her body. Um, and, and it really, really just matched. And the wart fell off. 
And then, of course, she wanted to go on and and address some other issues. And, you know, four years on, she was training to be a homeopath because oh, she had come off 26 drugs, um, you know, dur- during the course of, of, of using homeopathy. So it just goes, what is cure? It's different for yeah. all of us, isn't it? Yeah, and I suppose we should also... Uh, just to make sure everybody's clear, anybody's watching who's home prescribing, you don't just come off all your drugs, um, any conventional medicines. Do not do that without the prescriber knowing and without your homeopath knowing. It's so important, particularly with long term um, drugs for arthritis, for depression, particularly depression and anxiety. It's, it's, it, we can really support underneath, but um, it's our duty of care, obviously, never to, to allow you to become unsafe. And it can be really unsafe to come off medicines without absolutely tapering them. And it can take years to do that safely. So disclaimer in there quickly. Really, just, really it's so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You must yeah. always go back to your doctor um, if you are changing your medication. But it's a really good point, actually, to, to be talking about, isn't it? Because can we help people whilst they are on medication? And I am always amazed that, yes, yes, we can. Mm. Yeah, I'd love to know what you gave your lady for the that feeling of poison. Because I, I it just brought to mind a case I had a long time ago where... Um, in fact, this was a lady with terrible arthritic joints, and um, I was thinking about giving her lachesis for lots of different reasons. But the thing that really clinched it for me was, for some reason, breastfeeding came up, and I can't remember exactly why. But she she was she went, oh no, I couldn't possibly do that. That's disgusting. And and I was I thought, wow, that's really that's quite a big thing to say, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's such a natural process. And she said, no, I feel as if. I would be poisoning my babies. And so that the lachesis has this feeling, doesn't it, of being poisoned. When you said that about the lady with yeah. the wart, I immediately yeah. thought, oh, I wonder if that was, yes. that was yes. maybe your prescription. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. I gave her x-ray, um, which is most bizarre and, and, and not looked at really for warts. But this has opened up another question, hasn't it? Because we often find out more when we talk to somebody and the reactions that they have to certain things that we say are so important to understanding how people are feeling and and what's going on there. Yeah, language is really, really important. Um, This week I had a young uh, patient in their teens uh, who who was clearly... um, clearly pulsatilla case and everything was very very changeable with her but she was very very clingy and one of the things that that her mother said to me is that she had a couple of um baby teeth she said they just won't let go <laughs> and so the, the everything that she said yeah. was reinforcing the pulsatilla clingy i can't let go you know so well, yeah i mean I, I love to just look at the patient's language and of course when we train we we have to be the non judging. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the phrase? It's gone. We're an unprejudiced observer. Unprejudiced observers, of course, and and so that just watching and listening and seeing what emerges. Yeah, it's it's very exciting actually. And, and I, I sometimes come to a consultation. It feels a bit like a performance. I'm I have a bit of a free sense of anticipation as to what they might say because it can be just so so fascinating and 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 actually a great privilege i think for us as homeopaths to hear people often ha- have the courage for the very first time in their lives to say to us it's, it's yeah. an amazing privilege you're absolutely right and that's such a lovely way of 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 saying it and it reminds me of a lady who when we speak she always says, I do love talking to you because you don't think I'm strange when I tell you <laughs> this, that and the other. And and you're right. It is such a privilege for us to be able to listen. And we're always thinking, oh, that's really interesting. Of course, we have to be careful not to say that when they have just described something. But for us, we are thinking, we are listening in a different way. Mm, and observing, uh, which brings me to another question that, that we thought about, uh, which is how do you treat 
babies. And I'm, I'm one of the homeopaths on the homeopathy for babies and toddlers group, which is a fantastic group. Um, and this question comes up again and again, how, how can you possibly choose the, the remedy when you, even as an adult, it's sometimes really difficult to describe how you feel, what the pain feels like. So many people, when you say, tell me about your pain, they say, well, it hurts. <laughs> and for us, as a home, you felt that's it's a bit of a dead end, isn't it? All right, it hurts, but how does it hurt? What does it feel like? And of course, when you're dealing with a baby or an animal, actually, but um, in this instance, babies, um, it's all about observation. Absolutely looking at you know, the way they interact with the parent, the way they interact um, even on a Zoom video screen, I had somebody yesterday who he ran away. He wouldn't come to the camera, and so that, that's so interesting for me that there's that um, huge nerves. And the mother said, "Oh, that's really unusual." Or another mother might say, "Oh, he always does that." So these, you know, yeah. just the behaviour, and um, so many other things aren't there. The sleep position, how how babies sleep, and how they cry. You're, yeah. just, you're just looking at them and looking for clues the whole time about their character. And anybody who's had a baby will, will tell you they have a strong character. Absolutely, yes. the moment they open their eyes and look at you, you can always, always tell there's something about them. Yeah. So in some ways it's easy because it's uncomplicated at that stage. So, yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. You're taking the information you've got, you've got everything that you can get hold of. And of course, we also take into consideration the, the family medical history, don't we? Yeah. And what happened during conception, pregnancy, birth, um, leading up to that stage. So we've got so we've got that we often we don't have that information when we're helping coaching mm. with animals but um with babies yeah the parents know a lot more about the baby than they think they know they yes know what to do and what not to do at certain times yes yes and i very recently had a very young patient who was born just before the pandemic and i found a, a lot of young patients so they've been you know three four five years old now and they've had this prolonged period of um being born into a world which was really quite frightening and the parents were frightened of going out the home became you know, such a safe place to be that and the babies so the children are often afraid of strangers afraid of people in masks um and your great fear of being left going to school having a babysitter all these things and it's all informed by by that incredible atmosphere of the pandemic. Um, so, so all of these things we, we take into account. Yes, absolutely. And and for some people, it, it, their their reactions, their behaviour might be perfectly normal. For others, it might be completely out of character. So yeah. Understanding that we don't have a baseline of what is normal, do we? No, as I to say, there's no such thing as normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. We're Who all decides. <laughs> yeah, completely individual, and what is normal for you is completely normal for the next person. Oh. And and that also is, is the main thing about homeopathy, isn't it? Because you know your body better than anybody else in the world. Oh. Yeah, so you know if something feels right or not. Yeah, you know. Yeah. If, um, if, if uh, I, I said to somebody the other day, and I've never said this before, but, but, but I know I needed to say it. I said, how do you feel when I say this? And she said, well, actually, it makes me really angry. And I just knew that it, it was just a word. She was calling it one thing. I was calling it something else. And I knew that that was what the the main object that that needed to be explored um, mm. was. And 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 when we started to explore that further about how she was treated by other people and um and what that brought up, it just opens up everything so that we're able to to help. Yeah, yeah, and. Um I think going back again to the normal thing, it's partly um, 
you know, in society today, the way children are taught in school, they, they have to conform, don't they, to, to such a sort of this normal way of learning, which can be so uncreative and so limiting for many, many children. We've really lost sight, I think, in society of just how different people should be and can be and are. Yeah. yeah so, so it's it's good to have a window on on that. And uh, yeah, we we are so lucky, aren't we, that we are allowed to explore all of these avenues of of actually mm. understanding the whole of why we are what we are, why we feel what we feel, why we see what we see, mm. why we don't see <laughs> half of the things. Yeah, and we're only as good, of course, as the information that we can receive. So sometimes people, particularly on a first appointment, we're building a relationship. They, they don't always feel ready to tell us everything. Sometimes sometimes things, trauma, um, family stuff, it can just go so deep. And, and it takes time to build up a, a trust. And that's incredibly important. So sometimes on the first appointment, you just have to say, what, what's really troubling you the, the most? Yeah. And just go with that. And try and be supportive and, and you know we're always trying to be supportive but it can be frustrating if you think you're not helping someone as much as you might but if they're not ready to give you the information that you need as a homeopath to really help them then again it, it, it's a, a process it's a it's a process rather than um a, a one appointment fixes all it, it really is you know like the healing take the healing takes time exactly. and giving us that time yeah Time and is not something we're good at giving each other, giving ourselves, is it? <laughs> and and of course, just using the uh, analogy of, of of peeling an onion, taking off layer by layer. You know that mm. that's how it has to go. We start with the outside layer, and we get deeper mm. as time goes on. And and yeah. that really brings us full circle to what actually is cure, doesn't mm. it? Because yeah. you know we are we are the um, the result of many years of different actions um, to get to where we are now. So, so if we have, if cure is right back here, you know, 30, 40 years ago, we have a fair few layers mm. to go back through. So it is worth going, coming back to that question of what mm. will you be able to do when you're better, when you feel better? Yeah. And that, that, you're bringing me straight to another question that's always coming up, which is, how quickly do remedies act and when will I feel better? And again, it, it's, it's so individual and that's the beauty of homeopathy. It is so, so individual. Every time I prescribe, it's, it's completely taking into account the individuality of the person sitting in front of me. And um, I've had testimonials from people to say, I felt something the moment I took the remedy and that, that's amazing if someone is so sensitive. And with other people, it might take months it might take several remedies and and a lot of work and a lot of discovery so everyone is different everyone has a, a different journey um you're you're so right and i love hearing people's responses and so if you have had a particular response please do email let us know because it is it is so interesting and so diverse to to mm people say happens after taking a remedy um, mm -hmm. from, I had one lady who said I just can't believe it I took the remedy and I went to bed without washing up and I've never done that in 50 years you know and, mm -hmm. and you know and, and for other people I I just recently had somebody who had given their daughter a chamomilla and the next time the the daughter said no I don't want the chamomilla because I'm I want to feel angry a little while longer <laughs> And maybe they maybe they needed that. Maybe that, exactly. that that's it, like a discharge and needed to come out. Yeah. Um, but can I want to 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 to, <laughs> to realise that this amazing. was gonna stop her being angry? I thought yeah. that was absolutely amazing. Yeah. So that it just shows that diversity, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, I actually printed out this testimonial, so I thought it might okay. be interesting. So, it okay. so um so it's a lady, I think she was in her thirties. She said, I took the first pill last night just as I got into bed. The reaction was instant, really within seconds. I could feel a mild burning sensation in my chest, mainly at the thymus area, but really from sternum to throat. 
It remained even as I fell asleep and is still there now. It feels great, like a herbal poultice applied from the inside. I was not expecting such a physically powerful reaction. I'm quite shocked, but really impressed. So, and then she just went on to thank me, but, but really she gave me a lot of information and, and I felt I could confidently prescribe. And, and it's just magical when that, that kind of response comes in through your, your email, you think, wow, that's amazing. And it doesn't always happen like that. It can be frustrating sometimes. You don't feel you're quite there. And, and like I said before, everybody takes a different amount of time. And, um, you know, we all study, that there's a book called The Organon by Samuel Hahnemann, which is a bit like our homeopathic Bible. And there's a chapter in there, I happen to know it's chapter 250, where he, he says that it's the, the homeopath's duty if the remedy in an acute situation doesn't really do something to move the patient forward within six to 12 hours. It's the, it's the homeopath's duty to, to retake the case and, and you know, find out more. And in an acute situation, that's when we can be really, really effective. And that, that's why this homeopathy 24 seven is such an important service. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And we've just started, for some reason, we never had a Facebook group called Homeopathy 24 seven. So we will be sharing some of those chapters from the Organon because it will lead to such good discussion like this. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Anne. It has been a real pleasure. And it's so enjoyable for us, isn't it, to have these conversations. Yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you very much for asking me. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Take good care. See you soon. I do hope you've enjoyed today. It's been just great talking to Anne, hasn't it? And we've really gone into depth about the types of things that you are asking about. Now, next week, I have a set of questions. We will be talking about everything from potency, dose. We'll be talking about addiction. We'll be talking about finding the right remedy and what is it that we're actually looking for and why sometimes it's really complex trying to find that remedy. So I hope that you can join us next week. I look forward to seeing you then. Take care. I do hope you've enjoyed these episodes and I do hope you can subscribe to our channels. Now, there are various ways for you to listen to our podcast or watch it on video on YouTube. So whether it's iTunes, Spotify or YouTube, please do subscribe and please do leave us a review. If you leave us a review on these platforms, then more people will see our podcast. We just want more people to share the joy of homeopathy. It's a choice that everybody should know about. Please do everything you can to help us help more people. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and look forward to listening to our next one. Please don't forget to follow our podcast on your chosen channel and please do leave us a review so we can continue to share homeopathy with as many people as possible. If you do have any questions, please do reach out to us on any of our social platforms mentioned in the show notes. We at Homeopathy 24-7 hope to empower you on your natural health journey.